When it comes to modern fighter jets, budgets grow exponentially. Programs like Joint Strike Fighter cost countries tens of billions of dollars, but not everyone has such resources. This is where the Swedish Saab JAS-39 Gripen fighter comes into the picture, betting on balance from the very beginning. The Gripen's become an almost ideal aircraft in terms of combat effectiveness and profitability. Version C and D have proven their effectiveness in operation, and in the latest modifications, JAS-39E and JAS-39F, engineers intend to maintain the same efficiency with a significant technological breakthrough. So let's take a look at the technologies behind the Gripen NG fighters and figure out why they're being called the most pilot-friendly. The 1980s were a period of change for Sweden. The country was experiencing dramatic political and economic changes while the Cold War was intensifying on the international stage. Sweden, like many other European states, tried to maintain neutrality, avoiding involvement in a potential conflict between the superpowers. However, balancing between the idea of neutrality and the need to defend one's territory became increasingly difficult. The growing threat from the USSR required the country to have modern military technologies and defense equipment. The Swedes could not afford to depend on foreign supplies for military aviation. These realities became the background and main motivation for the development of a new fighter, which was intended not only to become a symbol of national defense, but also a response to the challenges of the time. The military high command had set an ambitious task to create a multi-role fighter that would combine the capabilities of protecting airspace, conducting attack operations and reconnaissance while having high maneuverability, ease of maintenance and most importantly the lowest possible operating cost. In the process of deliberation, the country had seriously considered the option of purchasing American fighters Northrop F-20 Tiger Shark, McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet, General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon, as well as the French Dassault Mirage 2000. But ultimately, their government still chose the domestic manufacturer Saab, which had previously created the Saab 35 Draken and 37 Viggen for the Swedish Air Force. In 1980, a consortium called Industry Group JAS, IG JAS, including Saab, Volvo Aero Corporation, Ericsson GEC Marconi and FFV Aerotech was formed in order to design, develop, and manufacture various parts of the future fighter aircraft, and by 1982 the Swedish authorities officially approved funding for the project, which led to the order of five evaluation prototypes and another 30 production units. In the winter of 1983, one of the Saab 37 Viggins in Sweden's fleet was converted into a flight test aircraft to test the avionics of the future JAS-39. And in that same year, the future fighter was given the formidable nickname Gripen, which meant Griffin, having been the heraldry of the Saab logo for many years. We had to wait a few more years for the official appearance of the Gripen, but in the spring of 1987, on the 50th anniversary, Saab finally rolled out the first JAS-39, and just one year later it made its first flight. Even at launch, the Gripen was an elegant and sophisticated fighter with a larger delta wing positioned towards the tail. This design eliminated the horizontal tail, freeing up more space for fuel inside the aircraft and increasing the load capacity for external weapons. And the presence of canards provided the device with positive lift at all speeds. The fighter was deliberately made unstable, compensating for this moment with fly-by-wire digital control which removed many flight restrictions, improved maneuverability and reduced the resistance of the device. Additionally, the Gripen has good short takeoff performance and is capable of maintaining high descent rates as well as short landing loads. Engineers play special emphasis on this because Sweden, back in the late 1950s, developed a clever distributed system of air bases, the BAS-60, which by 1980 made it possible to equip about 200 small bases with a runway up to 2,624 feet long and 56 feet wide. Moreover, some of them were built in close proximity and directly connected to each other through taxiways, which are often also sections of public roads. For the JAS-39 itself, a strip 1,600 feet long is enough for normal operation. Operating the Gripen is generally an extremely pleasant thing. For example, with short turnaround time, the new Swedish Beast takes no more than 10 minutes, during which a team of one technician and five workers can rearm refuel and perform routine checks and maintenance before returning to flight. 
During the design process of the fighter, specialists spent thousands of hours to simplify and minimize aircraft maintenance. In addition to the convenient layout, many subsystems and components require very little to no maintenance, and the health and usage monitoring system, HUMS, provides technical personnel with comprehensive information about the status of the device. And let's not forget to add to this cocktail the ability to replace battle-damaged parts with spare parts pre-printed on 3D printers, a feature that the Swedes began testing back in 2021 and are successfully using in the latest modifications. Saab themselves proudly claim that the Gripen offers 50% lower operating costs than its best competitor. You don't have to look far for an example. To fly an hour in the F-35 Lightning II, you'd have to burn at least $30,000 while the JAS-39 Gripen will require no more than $8,000 for the same time frame. Yes, it's difficult to compare them in terms of stealth, but the difference is still impressive. And what can we say about such monsters as the F-22 Raptor, whose expenses per hour are estimated at a comical $60,000 to $70,000? But as you know, any plane can be made even better. The initial production version of the JAS-39A was supplemented by a two-seat variant, the JAS-39B, which included a second cockpit to reduce pilot workload. However, to implement it and additional life support systems, Saab had to sacrifice an internal fuel tank and a cannon for close combat. The glider had to be lengthened by two feet. The subsequent update in the form of JAS-39C and JAS-39D was also not long in coming, appearing six years after the debut JAS-39A. These modifications were fully compatible with NATO standards, had expanded capabilities of weapons, electronics, and other systems, and also received an in-flight refueling function. The only difference, as with previous models, was that the JAS-39C was a single-seater, while the 39D was a two-seater. The most interesting and desirable version of the Swedish fighter for most other countries was the Gripen Next Generation NG, better known as JAS-39E and JAS-39F. Moreover, the changes began from the outside. In the official photos for 2023, we saw for the first time that additional surface area was added to the wing. This resulted in a more trapezoidal appearance rather than the deltoidal one that was previously seen. Although according to Saab representatives, the first aircraft with the new wing configuration began flight tests back in 2021. In the future, this change will allow the Gripen EF to carry even heavier loads, external weapons, fuel tanks, and other payloads. However, the penultimate modification is already capable of carrying impressive loads up to four large Saab RBS-15 anti-ship missiles weighing 1,800 pounds each, up to nine air-to-air -air missiles, including AIM-9X Sidewinder, AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, Iris-T, A-Darter, Python-4-5, as well as 16 GBU-39 small diameter bombs. Compared to the JAS-39C, the Gripen EF was 3% larger and significantly heavier. By moving the main landing gear, it provided 40% more fuel with a proportionate increase in maximum ferry range to 2,500 miles and operational range to 810 miles, as well as two additional hardpoints on the underside of the fuselage. The Gripen NG features an all-new General Electric F414 GE39E turbofan engine with 14,400 pound-feet of thrust and 22,000 pound-feet with afterburner, which will allow the fighter to reach speeds of up to Mach 2 at an altitude of 50,000 feet. Of course, such a large-scale update could not do without improving the internals of the device. Developed by Ericsson and GEC Marconi, the PS-05A Pulse Doppler radar was replaced by the fresh Acer radar Raven ES-05 from Leonardo, which is capable of scanning objects in a significantly increased field of view and improved range. Interestingly enough, the Gripen E was the first fighter to be equipped with an Acer radar mounted on a rotating repositioner or swashplate, which allows the electronically scanned antenna to be rotated left and right to increase the field of view, although it's usually fixed in fighter aircraft simply in the forward position. Simply put, a pilot can turn away from a target by more than 90 degrees and still maintain radar lock on it, which is especially effective when combined with air-to-air -air missiles. Furthermore, the EF modification integrated Skyward G infrared search and track Erst sensor capable of passively detecting thermal radiation from air and ground targets in the immediate vicinity of the aircraft. According to Saab, Gripen E sensors can even detect targets with low cross-sectional area beyond visual range. This is made possible by tracking with the best sensor dominate system, 
either by onboard sensors or through the transmitter auxiliary unit data link function of the radar. The new electronic warfare system, EWS, is something Saab's particularly proud of, calling it a digital shield because it includes a 360-degree spherical missile approach warning system, MAWS, combining it with active and passive aircraft protection systems. The Gripen manufacturer admitted that it invested no less than an impressive amount in the modularity aspects of the JAS-39 than in its electronics. The aircraft was equipped with modular avionics with a decoupled architecture. That is, the hardware and software can operate independently of each other, so you can replace any hardware without affecting the software and vice versa, without damaging the critical systems of the fighter. We've already seen something similar in the American F-35 Lightning II, where the entire aircraft is an advanced Lego-like system with easily replaceable components. After much deliberation, the Swedish Air Force decided to follow the example of one of the largest purchasers of Gripen, Brazil, by replacing the three large displays in the JAS-39 CD cockpit with a single wide area display. In fact, the pilot receives a huge map of the battlefield over the entire area of the touch display where he can select the area to display his current location, be aware of mission routes, other platform details, and all objects of interest or threat to him in the air and on the ground. Overall, the Gripen gives pilots a level of automation to suit every taste and preference. They can choose to use the systems manually, semi-automatically, or fully automatically. Actually, this was the reason why the Swedish fighter received the title of the most pilot-friendly in the world. The number of Gripens that have rolled off the assembly line has already exceeded 300 units, of which more than 100 were purchased by partner countries – South Africa, Hungary, the Czech Republic, Brazil, and Thailand. And this is not surprising, because the price of even the newest JAS-39EF remains quite affordable – about 50 to $60 million, which is significantly less than the American Stealth F-35, each of which will cost at least $80 million. Still, there's some truth in the phrase, Ferraris are art, Fords are tools. Yes, the Gripen NG came at the height of the era of stealth fighters around the world, but thanks to a balanced and flexible set of high-quality features and a relatively compact and, most importantly, mature and easy-to-use package, it's guaranteed to find more than one buyer. You think the Gripen will be able to remain relevant even into the 2040s? Or will Saab still have to put all of its innovations and developments into the form of a completely new fighter? And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.